2015, an elite DFS Army Commando unit formed to bring high-level DFS strategy to the masses. Today, hated by DFS sharks and lineup sellers alike, they continue their quest to turn Joe into DFS Pro. Welcome to week two of the 2017 NFL Seasons Kicker Corner Podcast. I am PV Aaron, welcoming you back to another fun week of kickers. I know most people don't like kickers. I'm a big believer that kickers are people too. And I want to help you pick the right kicker for your GPP contest, your cash contest, uh, and if you are not a member of the DFS Army, I want to give you a chance to join the DFS Army. Save 20% by using the promo code KICKERS. That's with an S at the end, KICKERS with an S. That'll save you 20% for as long as your membership is active. If you want some other great ways to join and maybe try out a month free, we have tons of options that you can find on the website, www.dfsarmy.com. Go check them out. Now, before I get started into this week's picks, I want to go over last week's favorite call of the, of the, of the pod. That was Zerline. I hope you had him. He did great. Uh, for the most part, I had a really solid week last week on my picking kickers, just following a very basic system that everybody can follow. Uh, I have a how to pick kickers. It's linked in every week's article. Uh, check it out if I'm ever not able to give you guys the content. Uh, it's, I want you to be able to do this on your own. I don't want to just hand feed you uh, while I don't mind hand feeding you. I want you guys to be as good as anybody out there when it comes to picking. So check out all that stuff on DFSArmy.com. This week I'm going to give you my favorite play. And then I only have two GPP kickers. There are tons of kickers this slate that honestly could go off. If you look at the Vegas lines, it, it's almost like you could just pick kickers for days. Um, but we don't have days to go over just kickers. There's so much other information. We're building from the bottom up, so I'm going to give you my favorite play. Uh, this week it is Giorgio Tavicho. I'm sorry I butchered that name. Uh, I am not a name person, sadly enough. Uh, he's the Oakland kicker. Uh, this week he gets my uh, highest praise. Uh, Oakland is facing the New York Jets. New York Jets are not a team that any uh, any offense is going to fear. And a, a, a team as strong as Oakland Raiders sh should have no issues uh, moving the ball. Uh, this should lead to them being up. They are 13 and a half point favorites, or they at least were the last time I pulled Vegas lines. It's been a couple of days. I usually don't worry about Vegas lines from opening till about Saturday, Sunday morning is when I really start to see if anything's changing when the Sharps are starting to put their money in. Uh, for more information on that, you can go to DFSArmy.com. Uh, VIPs have access to an article just on line movements. Anyways, he is one of my favorite kickers this week, and part of that is because he's already shown us he has a leg from 50 yards, shooting up two of those 50-yarders uh, last week. Total of four field goals, going to get some PATs. Uh, he's got a very safe floor, a very high ceiling. He's a great all-around kicker, uh, which is why he is while he's in my cash kickers, uh, because he's got such a good floor. He honestly is going to be a GPP winning kicker, I believe, this week as well. Uh, and later in the game, when Oakland is no longer trying to win, if they're up by two, three touchdowns, they're going to move the ball, they're going to get into the 30, and then they're just going to kick the ball when the, the three straight runs don't get anything because... I mean, they're not trying to score anymore. They don't need to. They just need to run clock. Um, and they're going to be willing to kick from further out because they don't need to punt anymore. Even if they give up the ball, it's not going to be the end of the world. So 50 yarders should be coming. Uh, 40 yarders should be coming. And there should definitely be some three pointers coming. Anything from 39 and less, really, is your three point range. So lots of safety there. So along with the safety, we're also going to go over those uh, GPP kickers like I talked about. Um, <clears throat> like I said, this week there, there really are a lot of great kicker options. Uh, I, I, I really I really struggled this week figuring out who I wanted to go with GPP. And I only nailed, I only brought out two. Uh, and I felt I nailed it down because I, I didn't want to go 
with a list of 20 kickers. I, I, anybody who gives you a list of kickers and it's 55 kickers long, they're not helping you out because they're giving you every kicker in the game. These I wanted to pull because out of all of the options, I felt like we had a really good option here to get that lower uh, focused on kicker who <clears throat> is possibly going to bring you some great value. So the first one is Will Lutz from New Orleans. He's at home, and while I do have Goskowski higher ranked than him, uh, that is because I'm not 100% convinced on New Orleans' offense. We did see them against a, a tough Minnesota. We did see them on the road, uh, but now they're back in the Superdome, and we know that the Superdome is known for increasing scores. One issue I have with New Orleans when they're at home, one of the biggest reasons I normally don't play New Orleans kickers at all, even though they're almost always favored to be uh, plenty high-scoring games, is they often tend to be such touchdown, back-and-forth, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. It doesn't leave a lot of room for the kicker. Uh, Lutz is also not necessarily one of the most accurate kickers we've ever had uh, in the history of kicking. Um... <clears throat> He did have four kicks last week, which I do like. That means he's got he, he's he was getting some use, but again, that was on the road against Minnesota, where the offense struggled. This is at home in a 56 over under game, with you know New England expected to win. They're the, the, the favorite, so it, it does lead us to some some questions. Uh, but with him being home, I do think this is a GPP play. 4700 is not a terrible price. It will give you something different just in case, say, Giorgio does bomb. I do believe he'll be high-owned uh, for a kicker, and that gives you some uh, a nice little pivot that still has some upside, uh, especially with him being at home, as long as New Orleans doesn't become this touchdown, uh, back-and-forth slugfest. Those can always be a, a risk. My next GPP kicker I'm giving you is Brandon McManus. McManus is one of those kickers who will make or break you. Last uh, last weekend, I actually lost. Um, I, I, I sat on the cash line, uh, missing by about three points, and I had McManus as my kicker. Uh, with the five points from the 50-yarder that he missed, I would have been sitting pretty. With uh, a four point from 40 yards, basically, if they just hadn't gone backwards in those two couple, you know, that... that and, and kick from where they originally were at first down. I would have made my cash line and my GPP on that lineup. Uh, it was the lineup where I had faded Bailey. Uh, this one we get McManus at home again against Dallas. I see this as being a close game where it's going to be more of a slugfest. We have uh, Dallas traveling to Denver. Uh, we're getting we're at that 4,700 price point. It's only a 42 over under. Neither team here is expected to score really well, but what that does help us out with is in the kicker, we don't need the offense to be working amazingly. We need the offense to be getting from the 20 to the 20. Uh, as soon as we cross that, Denver makes for farther kicks. I'm hoping we don't have any more missed 50 yarders for McManus, but McManus is as strong as his defense. McManus gets more points when you have a good, strong showing from Denver defense. The better Denver defense plays, the better McManus does. It actually, McManus does better the, doesn't do better with the offense. He does better with the defense. So one of my GPP plays here would be to also then stack him with Denver defense because if Denver defense is having a big game, McManus is having a big game. You're going to get that double dip in correlation. It's a great GPP. I doubt a lot of people are going to be on Denver defense. I don't know their exact price off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I should pull that. I should have pulled that up. But, again, we have Denver at home. They are a, a strong defense. Dallas does bring in a nice running game. They do bring in some uh, some passing options. Um, but I, I think, and, and they're not necessarily a, a team that's prone to turning the ball over. But as we've seen Denver do in multiple seasons, they can make games for teams who don't turn the ball over into games that they turn the ball over. So those were the two big names that I wanted to go over. They're the two big names that I put in my write-up but because I like you guys and the pods a little on the short side I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys one more option um, we're gonna go down towards the bottom of the barrel we're gonna find some options down here at the bottom of the barrel that uh, that we could really focus on for uh, a potential GPP type 
uh, contest. And the one I'm going to go to is Young Ho Koo, uh, who uh, unfortunately got his first field goal attempt through the uprights, but it was timed out. He was iced. Second one gets blocked. Nothing he can do about that. Uh, but the nice thing is not going to be very highly owned because he had one field goal to kick. This is against Denver. And this is a game where LAC was behind. Um, this game, they're going back home. Uh, Koo will be playing against uh, Miami. This is a game where uh, the Chargers defense comes into play. Um, so I really think that you'll be, you'll be really happy with the potential here to get a nice correlation stack again with that LAC uh, defense stacking with Koo very low owned again we have almost no information he did have a really nice first kick um, again the second one really wasn't his fault the, the line that guy was basically just right in the middle hands up nobody nobody disrupting him and that's what Denver defense does so uh, he shows 0 for 1 but I'm going to give him one for two, uh, honestly, because he really did have that first one through. So, <clears throat> hopefully, this week you find that kicker that works for you. Again, DFSArmy.com to find all of those great ways that you can join. DFSArmy.com to find out my kicker write-up that's got about six more kickers written in there. Uh, I go through about a little paragraph on each one. I have my defense part up. Um, so hopefully you'll find yourself a quick defense. This week I weren't really lazy with the defense. I'm sorry, I've been working. I, I've worked seven days and I've got one more to go. So it's been a crazy week for me. So I went on the I went the easy way on the defenses. Um, however, hopefully you guys have yourselves a great week too. I had a lot of fun week one. I basically broke even. I was a little down for the slate. Uh, I kicked butt on. Uh, FD2. I made the stupid decision of taking my FanDuel cash Rams defense out. No, oh, I just didn't want to have Sally left over. Silly mistake. Hopefully you didn't make that mistake. You had Rams. I look forward to talking to you guys all next week. Good luck this week. Thank you for listening to the DFS Army podcast. Join the DFS Army today and gain access to our private Slack chat, where you can chat with real DFS pros and coaches, as well as other DFS Army members with winning track records. Also included in your membership is access to our premium articles, DFS Army weighted projections for every sport we offer, from NFL to MMA. Weekly player picks and cheat sheets, the strategy vault of timeless concepts, and the DFS Army Domination Station, a truly state of the art lineup optimizer, offering your personal projections or ours. The DFS Army membership is the best value across the industry. Join today and get two free ebooks, as well as the secrets to unlocking a new level to your game. Game.